Welcome back. So, like I said before we went on that short break, we're going to talk about HIV and AIDS. We know that um, HIV has been in the country for so long, and, you know, Ghana diagnosed its first AIDS case in March 1986. And by May 1986, 26 cases had been identified. And since then, the country has experienced a general HIV epidemic with a current prevalence of 1.7% in the general population. But... Um, 20 years ago, antiretrovirals or antiretroviral drugs were introduced into the country. And today, uh, this year, they're celebrating 20 years of saving lives, of helping people manage and live with HIV. I'm joined in the studio by Kenneth Aye Danso, who's head strategic information unit of the National AIDS Control Program. Good morning, Ken. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Good morning, and thank you for inviting us. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, I'm feeling great. Fantastic. God. Great. So let me start by simply asking, what's the HIV situation in Ghana right now? Thank you very much. So mm. currently the HIV situation in the country, mm. for every 100 tests that you do, mm -hmm. you are likely to have two people being tested positive. Wow. And so um, HIV affects mm. children, it affects adults, it affects pregnant women. And so all these populations are affected. Right. And currently we have about 354,000 people who are mm. estimated to be living with HIV. Okay. And then out of this figure, we have about 72% of that mm. um, that know their HIV status. Right. That constitutes about 254,000. And all and, these... And, and out of this number, we have 86% of that which is about 222,581 that are on the antiretroviral therapy. Okay. But that means that we have about 100,000 people in the country who are estimated to be living with HIV, but mm. they are undiagnosed. Oh, wow. Okay. So those who have been diagnosed, yes. um, they are able to live normal lives because of antiretroviral drugs. Exactly the case. Okay. How does that work? Do they pay for it? If they're diagnosed, does the government supplement? What, is the situ how, um, what are the ramifications around living with HIV on antiretroviral drugs? Okay, so let me start by saying that in the past, mm. when one was diagnosed as having HIV, um, what happened was that there are certain infections which ideally the body could have handled well. Okay. But because your immune system was compromised, you couldn't handle it. So these were called opportunist infections. So these were the, the ones that were killing people. So in those days, um, once you get HIV, it was quoted more or less like a death sentence. But then when ARVs came into the picture, what the ARV does is that it comes to interrupt the natural cycle of the replication of the yeah. virus, and thereby the quality of life is improved. So HIV, the ARTs mm -hmm. come to make sure that once you take it and then you adhere to the medications, your quality of life is improved. Okay. And it's free. It's free? It's free. Okay. Oh, sorry. My producer just told me you're Reverend. Hi, Reverend. Sorry that I left that out. So, no Reverend Kenneth Ayedan. No so, okay. So, if it's free, um, how many facilities are operating currently where people can go and have access to antiretroviral drugs? Currently, we have 735 ART sites mm. spread across the 16 regions. Okay. And then uh, aside that, we have about 6,000 um, prevention of mother to child transmitting centers. These are antenatal sites. But when we started, we started with just only three. Yeah. In 2003, there were three. Mm -hmm. But currently, we have 735 spread across the country. Okay. So 20 years on. Yes. What does that look like now? Well, it looks, it looks terrific because mm. 20 years ago, when persons were diagnosed, mm. it was more or less like a whole lot of psychosocial challenges. It was like a death sentence. A death sentence. Yeah. And you could see people on telly, wasting syndrome, where they have lost about 10% of their body weight. They were like skeleton and all that. So it was scary. And people were dying. But now, 20 years down the line, you can see these people are living. We have persons who are on antiviral medication mm. for the past 20 years, and they are living healthy, 
I mean, some of these people are married, they have children who are HIV negative, and it's, 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 it's so um, heartwarming to notice all this. So we have come a very long way. What are some of the things you're doing right now to mark this 20-year celebration or anniversary of antiretroviral drugs and the work that is doing to help Ghanaians living with HIV live a normal life? I mean, on the back of that, people no longer discriminate. At first, I remember when people, you know, skinny people were discriminated against. They, if you're skinny, they'll call you, they, they say you have HIV and all that. So I'm sure antiretroviral drugs is uh, it's like a miracle that most people have prayed for. So what are some of the things you're doing to mark this milestone? You mentioned discrimination, yeah. but um, we still have some challenges oh, when it okay. comes to discrimination because it's a barrier mm. where it is a bottleneck for people seeking to know their status and then when they are positive also getting on their medication. So we are working on that and we are appealing to the general public mm. to, to help us at least once you have HIV that is not a case, it's not um, the end of the world. We don't have to discriminate because you can be living with HIV out there. Yeah. And so we are marking the 20 years of HIV in the country. We first started with a media lunch that we had um, last week. Okay. And then we also continue with having further engagement with the media. We will be celebrating by having a time with the National Associations of Persons who are living with HIV. And then we also have a soccer um, event um, between two of the giants of the Ghana soccer. And then we also have some tour to visit some historic ART sites. And then we also have some, we'll crown this with a National Ace Day celebration in December. Mm -hmm. We'll also be having some inter-school quiz and, and debates along the line. Inter-school quiz and debate. Yes. Do you still have those school clubs? When I was uh, in secondary school, we used to have these HIV uh, clubs yes. where we would meet, I think, once a week to talk about HIV. And some of us were even ambassadors. I was an ambassador. We would go out and talk to people about prevention, how you can live a normal life with all that. Do you still do that? Yes, we, or, still, have okay. them. we still have them. Right. And they're very active them. in these schools? They are very active. Okay. They are very active. But we need to do more. Mm. Because nowadays people think that because ARVs have come into the picture, people are thinking that HIV is no more. And so we need to do more and then increase the education in our schools. Last year, there was um, an issue about the struggle. Because you mentioned that you're still you know, facing some challenges in the good work that you're doing, about the cost of clearing antiretrovirals at the ports. I remember, um, was it Dr. Addo also? Mm. Yes spoke on the polls and he talked about if the government does not come into aid in clearing these drugs from the ports, then uh, people's lives would be in danger. How's that situation? So I want to pick it from the angle that we need all hands on deck. The government is collaborating, doing so much, partners are supporting. Okay. And so currently we also need some form of domestic support, support from our companies in the country and all that to support what the government and partners are doing. So last year, there was a few gap here and there. And so that is why we have set up the AIDS Fund. The Ghana AIDS Commission have set up the AIDS Fund to be able to support some of this. And so we are appealing to companies in the country to be able to support. And so one of the key activities which we are doing is to also help us to be able to engage the private sector to keep on, to come on board, to support the procurement of ARVs. And when that is possible, then we'll have a, a seamless availability and supply of ARVs in the country. Okay, so is this, the ARV program, is it sustainable? Do you have adequate funding now? Like, are you, are you able to go about your activities smoothly without the you know, issue of cost currently? So mm. currently, all persons that are diagnosed to be living with HIV mm. and then willingly want to get on the medication mm. are on the therapy. Do we have enough to cater so for all these people? So we have enough to cater mm. for all these people. However, because these persons will be on medication for life, yeah. we need to think about the future, how we are going to sustain them. And that's how come we need additional support. But as it stands now, everybody, anyone who is HIV positive and willingly wants to get on the medication, medications are available for them. Okay. 
So although you say it's free, how much does it cost for a person living with HIV to take an antiretroviral drug? For a person, mm. once it's free, we take care of that. No. The lab, okay. If they were to pay for it, how much would it cost? I deal out of curiosity. What does it cost? Um, and so I think some time ago there was a, a research that was done, mm. um, some four or five years ago, that averagely for a year it was costing about I think about. Um, Roughly about 2,000 Ghana cities. For a year. Uh, but then, if you are to quantify everything, that would mm. be above that because there are lab investigations which you must do from time to time. And so, all these things are, 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 are free. The cost of ART, HIV testing mm. being put on the medication, is free. Right. So, um, as part of your celebrations, I'm sure you're sensitizing, you're, you have messages that you want to give the public, and you know, please use the platform to let the people know. Yes. Thank you very much. So I first want to start with, how do you get HIV? So once you have unprotected sex, you're exposing yourself. Mm. So we need to make informed decisions. Drug use, alcohol use, cloud our judgment. And so we need to be careful in this area. Mm. When you have a pregnant woman, definitely that woman is exposed to sex. And so we encourage all pregnant women when they go to the ANC, to, they will be offered HIV testing. They need to embrace that because our research shows that HIV can be transmitted and then the, the mood, the percentage for sex is about 75%. And then also other, other modes account for for, 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 for mother to child is about 25%. Oh, you mean 70% 70, yes. 70 of people 70%, who contract the disease yes. contracted through sexual activities. Through sexual activities. Right. And now you realize that from the uh, pregnant mother mm. to um, the unborn child, yeah. when a mother is exposed, that considers about 25%. Okay. And so that is why I'm placing light on the fact that pregnant women should assess the HIV services. And then also, you also have the unsafe blood transfusion, mm. and then also the use of sharp objects. Once somebody is exposed and you share sharp objects with the person, and then you have a cut, it's possible that you can be exposed. And so we are advising all persons in the country, if you don't know the HIV status, get to know your HIV status. You can walk into every health center available. It is free in the, private, in the, in the public facilities. Mm. HIV is free. And once you are HIV positive, we encourage you to get onto the medication because it's going to improve your quality of life. You can live a normal life. You can look after your children and all that. And also we encourage the whole country. When persons are living with HIV, we don't have to discriminate against them. Right. Because as you are discriminating, you yourself may be living with the virus mm. and you will not be aware. Right. So you are either infected with HIV or you are affected by it. So we are in together. So together, all hands on deck, let's fight and end the epidemic by 2030. You mentioned that you should go to a health facility to yes. check, but I know there are self-test kits too. Exactly. Would you encourage those? Or must we also, you we also encourage that. Mm. There are persons who want to test at the comfort of their homes. Mm. Once we take these self-test kits, the instructions are written on it. So you start the test and then you go and continue at the, at the, at the health facility. If you are reactive, then you go and continue because currently the testing is in three phases. The first screening, mm -hmm. the second screening, mm -hmm. and then the third screening. Okay. Then you can be diagnosed as having HIV. Okay. Right. So how long are you, uh, how long will the celebrations last? Well, the celebration yeah. is going to last the whole year. Okay. And so we are calling all of you to come and join. And so, so far we are so excited by the way the media has embraced this. And so we want to appeal to all Ghanaians, especially the private facilities mm. to take advantage and come on board and support the fight against HIV in the country. Together we can make it. Together we can make it. That is, thank you so much, You're Reverend Kenneth Ayedanso. Um, he's the head of Strategic Information Unit at the National AIDS Control Program. And we were just chatting about the 20 years anniversary or celebration of antiretroviral drugs that have come to help people living, persons living with HIV to live a normal life. Thank you so much. And we'll follow up with your celebrations. You know, you Thank said you we so are much. all in this together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But um, we are not done. In a moment, we'll open the phone lines and whatever your thoughts are on everything we've discussed this morning from 
um, the announcement of the campaign team of flag bearer of the NPP to HIV and even the uh, discussion on the centenary anniversary of enterprise insurance. We will be back shortly. <laughs>